Good afternoon. Welcome to the August the 21st Fireside Chat at Kirk County School District. We have lots of good information for you today and let me introduce the people in the room. We have Dr. Joel Hoff, Assistant Superintendent, and Jason Carr, who is the all things communication leader for this district. Today we have Denny Baldry here, who is going to talk about nutrition services and meals as we go forward. We have our transportation supervisor here, um, Michelle Williams, and I don't know, do we have anybody else? We've got there? our very special yes. guest. Who's our special guest? Stacy Smith just walked in the room. <laughs> oh, Stacy is here to help <laughs> us with questions. I didn't know I was a special guest. Well, of course he's a special guest. Welcome to this chat today. One of the pieces of good news I have today is that we believe that COVID cases this week in Crook County are down. I've heard of two, so I'm eager to see our have a good weekend and then see our metrics come out early next week because I think things are looking good in Crook County and good for us for uh, making those gains. That's great news. All right, so um, we're gonna first start off with some opening information, right? Yeah, okay, let's do Dr. it. Okay, Dr. Hoff, here we go. So uh, I'm gonna start off by, by sharing as Dr. Johnson mentioned, um, as you all know, about a month ago, the state transitioned their guidance to uh, weekly metrics. So every week they release weekly metrics that show us how many cases are in the county and what's our test positivity rate. And that can dictate when we're um, able to open schools. So and just being transparent with everyone, we wanna make sure all our um, staff and our parents and families and community members are aware of where we are at in our weekly metrics. So, and some interesting things happened uh, this past week where the state has actually gone back and changed some of our data. So you can see here, um, in order to open K-3, kindergarten through third grade, we need 30 cases per 100,000 with a test positivity rate of less than 5%, and we need that for three weeks. Um, looking here, um, the state has gone back and revised last week's data, this August 2nd data, our test positivity rate when they first released the data last week was 5.6, and that has been released to 4.2. So that actually uh, turns that week from us uh, not meeting to meeting for that week. And then they released on Tuesday our August 9th data, which we also met. So we've met for two weeks in a row. Um, we know that we our plan still is, uh, like Dr. Johnson mentioned last week, is to target September 25th as our K-3 kind of opening time, but obviously we're watching the data and we're trying to be as flexible as possible. Um, no new news or announcement there, um, but we will continue to watch our weekly metrics on whether we're able to open. Okay. And back to you for student registration. All right, so it is time for parents to make sure that their child is registered for school. Whatever kind of school you are going to do with your child, please get registered. If you are not registered, a postcard will be coming your way through your mail, your uh, US Post Office mail. And we encourage you to go online and get your students registered. We are working hard to make sure that we have our staff in the right place so that your child has that fabulous teacher that you're counting on. And we need you to be registered before we can actually finalize that information. So please go ahead and get on either the Crook County website. I think that's how you go on, right? That's the yep, best way. And there's been an email Probably out. the easiest way. There's also an email out, but we would really appreciate it if our friends and, and stakeholders around the uh, around Cook County will uh, get registered. Tell your friends it's time to register. Get those children's children on the school list and find out who they're going to have for a teacher and who they're going to have for classmates. Yes, and uh, a lot of people have been asking about their specific schedules. I'm a high schooler. When am I going to get my class schedules? Um, and that really feeds into the registration. So make sure you're registered. I know that uh, the secondary administrators, so our middle school team and a uh, high school team, were finalizing their master schedules this week and are gonna start doing the individual student schedules uh, in the coming days. So be looking for that. 
Um, and I know that our elementary teachers have also finalized their daily schedule, sorry, elementary administrators, and that'll be coming out here real soon too. So lots of good updates on that front. Lots of buzzing and action in the district right now as people get ready to welcome students back. It's only, gosh, we only We're getting have really close. Yeah, two weeks until it's time to welcome students and Teachers. Yeah. Yeah. We have new teachers coming on site next week. And so let's give them some bonus time. information. Yeah. We are excited because we asked our teachers what professional development they need in order to be ready to go uh, in the fall. And we have finalized our plans this week, Stacy Smith. Um, we are excited that we have, what is it, 10 sessions over a couple days, three or four days on uh, making sure our teachers are equipped with how to best. Um, work and teach and engage students through uh, digital learning. So we're really excited about that, um, that our teachers are going to be fully equipped to, to serve the best they possibly can. That there's was a some, bonus update. Yes, there's some great um, professional development and even for people who have been at it for a long time, we're all excited to get into those new, yeah. that new training. All right, I do believe first it guest. is time to bring our first guest on, guest on and our first guest will be Denny Baldry, and he is going to talk to you about food service. So Denny, I'm gonna give up my seat, and I'll come back later. Thanks, Dr. Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how nutrition services will look um, upon reentry and leading up to that. Um, Last spring, we implemented the implemented delivery program, um, having about 21 sites around town. We're going to start that. Um, the day school is scheduled to start. So the September 8th. Yep. Yes. Um, and then if kids go back to school, or hopefully they will, <laughs> we'll be uh, um, serving kids just like we would normally. They'll come to the cafeteria. It'll be more of a grab and go style. So they'll take the food to the classroom and they're going to eat in the classroom. Um, from that point, um, we'll have uh, the menus posted that are going to be pretty travelable so it'll cross over from distribution to being able to take it to the class um, beyond that point um, we're going to switch from summer meals to um, the national school lunch program um, there's a little bit of differences there where we have to actually track the meals and the people to get the meals mm -hmm. but we'll have more information as that comes out when we finalize that Fantastic. Um, and the biggest thing we need to do is make sure that we get our free and reduced applications in because there's a giant jump in the uh, eligibility rate. Yeah. So I'll have Joel bring up a slide that will show yep. you how to apply. So um, the free and reduced lunch rate um, helps people qualify so that they can students can receive meals at no cost. And the limits on those have gone up substantially. So I think it's like in the hundreds of thousand dollars where if, if you're below literally I think hundreds of thousand dollars, you can actually qualify. So right. let me show you how to access that form. So uh, here on our Kirk County School District website, you'll just go to Parent Resources. On the right side, scroll down till you get to this first uh, little link here, Parent Resources, where it says Cafeteria Resources, click that. And from there, I click this free and reduced application. It's the fourth one down on the right. Click that and it'll take you to this website and that is where you can go and fill, uh, fill out that information and they will uh, get your kids all squared away. So that's how you can access that and fill out that application uh, to make sure we're supporting your students with free and reduced lunch meals. So um, if, if you didn't know, we got so many positive replies from the meal service last spring. And that was because Denny and his team were getting the meals out, 21 meal sites. I think we were serving over a thousand meals a day or something crazy like that. So uh, a lot of credit to Denny and his team, all our food service workers uh, helping to make that happen. So thank you, Denny. You're welcome. Uh, as a parent, uh, make sure you're filling out that free and reduced lunch form. That'll help uh, you guys out and us uh, plan for our meals. Yeah, it only takes about 30 seconds. I did it today myself. So. Takes about Easy. 30 seconds. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> And as always, you can call us if you're having any trouble with the link. And with that, Denny, I think you're off the hot seat and we're actually right. gonna bring in our transportation director, Michelle Williams. Hey. It's kind of a squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good afternoon. I would encourage, we're trying right now to get some routes built for all of our students that are the most efficient and have the best accuracy time-wise. So if you haven't um, figured out what your students are doing, when you get registered, will you please go and register for transportation as we're building routes and it doesn't matter if your student is a 12th grader or a second grader, um, let us know if you're going to use our transportation services so that we don't have to do route changes regularly, which is frustrating for everybody. We want to try and do our best to get it as close to right the first time. And Joel will show you how to find and yeah. access that form. I have a question before I'm going to show them. Okay. That. So if I'm a parent, but we're not sure whether schools are open, let's say I have a sixth grader and it doesn't look like schools are going to open for sixth graders at least for the the time being do i still need to go fill that out now or do i wait till absolutely because the sooner we have that information and know that your student wants to ride the bus then the sooner we can plan ahead for when we do get to bring those students Perfect. in so if i'm a parent i'm planning at any point next year to use transportation i should fill this out as absolutely soon as possible. absolutely and the one thing that we are asking families is, is that we have one address in the morning one address in the afternoon so that we can cohort those kids together and keep them keep them together which gives us more flexibility in their classroom fantastic all right let me show you real quick i'll share uh, my screen here so folks can see um, how to get to that link so if i go to the crook county school district website and from there we've got a convenient tab uh, over here on the right, where I go to this 2021 school year information, I click that. And here, if you're interested in our models or options, the information's here, but uh, you look at this second link down, it says bus rider registration. I click that link, and that takes me to this form where I can uh, put in the information I need to register for a bus route. And again, like anything, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get a hold of Michelle. She's very nice and is happy to answer questions. So. Absolutely, call our office and if you can't get that form to work for you, we'll go ahead and call and somebody can help walk you through it and we can take that information over the phone from you. And with that, Michelle, right. I think you're off the hot seat now. I think Perfect. we're bringing uh, Dr. Johnson back in. All right. Well, Dr. Hoff, um, yeah. Oh, I can take this off now, right? Um, I think we're ready for questions. Yeah, already. we're kind of short and sweet today. Yeah, no big changes today. That's a relief, right? I see a couple coming in on Facebook. Um, let's see here. Heather Church says we uh, better off homeschooling. So yeah, we do have our homeschool partner program. So if you're interested in that, definitely enroll. That's why we created that program to help parents out. This is a really good question from Andrea Phillips. She says, if we meet the metrics, why is K3 having to wait until the end of September to go back? All right, so I will answer that for you. That's a good question. There has been a request to from a lot of people to set a date and let people know what's going on. So at, let's see, I guess it's been a week and a half, two weeks mm -hmm. ago now, I called it and said, you can count on us to start your kids after the 25th. We believe that that was a reasonable, a reasonable line to draw. Now, I like to under promise and over deliver. We have about 80% of our parents that say, if it's safe, we want our kids back in school. And I guarantee you, if it's safe, we're ready to bring the kids back. But I want you to not have to worry and not have to be concerned that should I bring them on the 8th, should I not bring them on the 8th? If we draw that line and we say, we think that on the 20, on the 14th, actually, we were saying we would call it two weeks out. But as of right now, we're still targeting bringing our K3 in on the 28th. 
we may be able to over deliver. And if this county becomes a safe place, then um, we may be able to bring students back. But parents will still have a choice. If you are wanting to keep them home at that time until you see a longer period of, of safety, then mm -hmm. we're gonna make that happen. But I'm trying to, what do you wanna say? Have my cake and eat it too, to give you a comfortable line where you know you can count on a, an announcement, but also um, if, if it's, if it's safe in Crook County, there's some real advantages to bringing kids back. Mm -hmm. We're watching the numbers. You, you know, yeah. the, the state has created this kind of system where we watch these numbers and that, that kind of helps us make our decisions. So we're definitely watching those numbers really closely. Things can change very quickly. Uh, one week it can be good and the next week it can be, be you know, we can move into a state or a, a metric area where we can't bring them back. Once we get students back in the building, the guidelines allow us some, um, some, a bit of a cushion to transition and to hold steady. So I, I like to tell the story about Jumpstart and we had three green weeks. We were able to start our Jumpstart. While the students were in Jumpstart, there was a surge in COVID but because the state gives us cushion once you're in there to pre prepare two weeks in advance, our students were able to stay in Jumpstart. And then the next week we went back to green. So we were able to keep our kids in there. Very good. So yeah, definitely stay tuned. Uh, and again, someone said, well, and we have to meet three weeks in a row. You have to meet yep. three weeks in a row. Thanks for pointing that out. You can't just meet it two. You gotta meet it three. Yep. We had uh, another question about laptops and Chromebooks, and that's something that each school is starting to roll out and get information on. So uh, the best thing, depending on what school your, your student is at, um, contact that school. And if you need a repair, I believe you can drop it off and it can get repaired and you can pick up a new one. Um, but get a hold of your school because they are beginning that Chromebook um, exchange or they have particular dates where they'll do roadside service. Um, any news for special education? Any updates? Well, I know that our team met this week, our special ed teachers, and they are preparing. I know that we, um, we have staff in place. I know they're reviewing IEPs and uh, calling parents if there's anything that needs to be um, discussed. So I think everything's moving forward on that. Yep, so get a hold of your case manager. Um, they know you best, they know your family best and your student best if you have any questions about your student's IEP. And feel free to call your principal this, you know, in the, in the short term, you can call the principals and you can get questions answered. And I know that Mona Boyd will always take questions for you if you call Mona or email Mona. Good question. So uh, Sheila Clark's asking about the bus registration form. Um, she's saying, they're, they're, uh, where do you put two addresses? Um, if there's any questions or you, you need any sort of accommodations on that, get a hold of Michelle transportation. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's prepared to answer that. All right. Michelle. Michelle, come on over. I'll trade with you. Oh, Here's your question. I, I saw it. So if you need more than one address, Joel, I think if we go farther into the form, you put your primary address in, and then there's a spot to request your alternate addresses. All right. And if you have any issues from there, get a hold Absolutely. of Michelle and she'll definitely help you out. We'll be able to help you. Perfect. Uh, will Kids Club be opening for K3 parents that are getting desperate for childcare? Good question. We'll have to get back to you on that. I don't know the answer to Kids Club right now. Mm -hmm. There is a lot. We've been meeting. <laughs> childcare is a big one. And they have been working on it. Um, and I know that if or when we open, they will have childcare, but I just don't know. Uh, I, that question I'm assuming you're asking for childcare in the Schools short are closed. Term. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, let's have someone from, I know Mona and Sean are heading our childcare initiative. So we'll have someone, Jason, could you write down, we need to get a hold of Laura Harrison about childcare. So Laura, we'll have someone reach out to you um, on that. So um, I just got a, 
comment on that Kids Club is actively looking at options to serve families. Okay, and good, I yeah. I think that's, um, I mean, th I think that's true. And I know that they're just trying to figure out the details of it. So will the opening date in September be for all grades or just K through three? Just K through three. We have to meet the, uh, for us to open for four through 12, the state has to drop some in their um, number of, of cases, active cases, and uh, positive testing. And um, I, the governor had a, a press conference today and it looked like, I talked to a board, one of our board members, and if, the, if we can see COVID drop, then it looks like somewhere between um, if we can see COVID drop, we could be in, we could have four through 12 in as soon as six weeks. Very good. All right. Uh, let's see, I don't want to miss any. I see Jenny Quinn asked the question, can we hang on to our Chromebooks even though we are in the homeschool partner program? Jenny Quinn, yes, you can. And uh, tech, tech support is completely available for, um, the homeschool partner program. So if you yep. want that Chromebook updated, if you want uh, the fresh updates on it, bring it in and we'll be sure you get that. But yes, you get to keep that. Um, will the opening date, when will the high schoolers get their schedules and when, and will there be a school supply list for online school so we know what to prepare for? Hmm. So the, the, the high school schedule is, inten they're intending to have that out um, Jason, as I look at the calendar, I'm thinking it's the 28th or the 16th. No, not for high school schedules. Monday the 31st is what. Oh, okay. Is. Monday the 31st for high school schedules, and then um, school supply list for homeschool. Uh, for online school, I think it's during distance learning. What's the school Same supply? Same as the regular supply list. We're going with the regular supply list, those things that you're not using at home. Um, when we open up, bring those in. Um, and again, students, I've said this before, but students won't be sharing supplies this year. Each student will have their own individual supplies. Good. Um, how to get to the form to schedule my son to ride the bus when school opens. Good news if you uh, are fantastic communications specialist Jason Carr put the link in there and if you have any trouble finding it again you can rewind this video and there's a screen share on that um, I missed my question everyone is and then a mass questions about um, students so students will have an option to wear a, a facial covering so either a mask or a face shield and those will be available we have face shields available i do not i mean i think there's some paper masks that are kind of a short-term wear yeah. that we we have thousands of them that we can pass out to students but um if a student has a preferred face covering you would want them to bring that One we the have the face shields that have a little foam rubber and an elastic around the head and then uh, a question about how do we connect with the teacher with no open house? Um, so I believe our schools are planning virtual open houses. That's right. There will be a virtual open house at each school. Um, there'll be more information on that coming out. And as you know, everything's different now. So you can't have large groups of people in one place, but um, people are looking at some pretty creative things to do some connections. So I think uh, we'll get more to you on that soon. All right. Um, there was one on the Barnes Butte page. Let me bring that up. A question from a Barnes Butte parent. Oh, I hear from Mrs. Bonner that elementaries are planning right now a drive-through open house. So stay tuned. And they'll be right mailing there. home information next week. Thank you, Kimberly. 
Um, as always, just as we're tracking down that last question, if you have any specific questions, um, our building principals are back to work. They're calling families. Um, they are helping. We know that there's a lot of a lot of questions, a lot of um, different things to be choosing. Get a hold of your your building administrators. They're happy to help you out, and um, we'll continue to answer any questions that you may have. So this question from Nicole is when the kids are learning from home, how will they be taught the school year? Will they be assigned a Zoom time and learn from there or will it be like last school year and learn kind of on their own? That's a really yeah. good question. It's a combination of Zoom time and independent practice, but we did uh, beef up and, and develop what the independent time looks like, for example, we purchased the actual published workbooks for students this year that match the, the curriculum that we have. But there's a schedule where teachers will be actually connecting live with their students every single day. So it's not just a once or twice a week this time, it's every day, plus there's independent time. Yep and uh, materials and resources uh, that will be used with, with learning. A couple uh, other questions. I think two of them are kind of the same. How, I think how are elementary parents, families gonna know who their teacher is? And I believe that information is the schools, just like you normally would, the schools will be mailing home a letter. Um, they'll have those virtual open houses and drive through open houses. So that information of who your kid's teacher is, how you get started, um, that all will be coming from your school in the coming weeks. Number one, we need people to get registered. And then um, as we get our numbers finalized, students are assigned to teachers. There's some um, class development going on right now, but in order to keep everything balanced, they need to get all the students that we can registered. So they can finalize those class lists. Yep, and uh, Mrs. Bonner from Kirkwood River reminded me that the question on the elementary daily schedule is, yeah, it'll, you'll have a, a virtual teacher walking you through that um, based at the school, and you'll even have things like um, <laughs> specials, like music, PE, and library. So it'll be very different from last year. And uh, I just got a note from Mrs. Bonner that said Barnes Butte and Crooked River We'll be posting class lists on August the 31st, I've got, same day as the high school schedules. Got two good questions. Well, I'll take the first one. Will there be season one for middle school sports starting August 31st? And if I remember correctly, that question came last week, and I think Mr. Bonner, athletic director, said they're planning to do something like that. It's pretty so, similar. Yep. Yeah, it was Kurt yep, so Kurt and Marcus and Troy, Troy Waite are working on that. And then a really good question. Just a, um, just a moment. It yeah. says, uh, Jim Bates says, Steen's Pillar will also be doing the same, posting class lists on August the 31st. Good. So yeah, that information is coming. Um, a parent is uh, concerned um, about uh, students on IEPs, how last year it was really hard for students at the end of the year um, to get the services they needed and you know, to learn at home and how things will look different this year. And I can answer that. So about, uh, about somewhere between 13 and 15% of our students are on an IEP. And there's a group of people that are communicating directly with those parents. So um, just in the bigger picture of things, there are certain times that students would be, once we have we're in comprehensive distance learning that students would be able to actually come on site and have some kind of service directly from the team at school. But all of that is being carefully planned. You can, there's so many limits to how much a student can be on campus and how many students can come to campus. So um, those, it's like a Rubik's cube by the time you start planning it all out and that team is very thoughtfully planning it so that everyone gets the services that they need and and that they have been uh, that have been designed for their IEP. I know that doesn't give you the exact details about your child's IEP and because I don't know the IEPs you'll have to call 
to get that information or even if you just email us a name, we'll make sure someone calls you. But we need to um, actually be careful about telling you what you can get because we like to make sure that you get more than what you think you should get. And this year is different than last year. Things are much more, um, they're much wider and deeper and they're more comprehensive. There's more opportunities um, and there's more planning that has been done. Last year, we were just flipped from regular school to total virtual online school. And everybody was um, racing to get to the point that they needed to. This year, we've planned ahead. We have a plan for the virtual learning and for the distance learning. And we have a plan where we can actually bring students on site for some of the services. Last year, that was not allowed. And this year, it is. So things are different this year. And it's a change for everybody. But we're, we're going to be we're committed and we're going to stay committed yeah. to make sure that you get the information you need. And we know it's a huge challenge for um, parents uh, with students on IEPs at home. It's it's hard. It's difficult. And I think the best thing you can do if you have any concerns, because we want to make sure your students get the best services possible, is you reach out to your case manager if they haven't reached out to you already and really say, hey, this didn't work for my student last year. And here's how we have to modify things. So that case manager, just like Dr. Johnson was saying, how every student on an IEP has a different individualized plan, make sure you reach out to your case manager so that you're collaborating, letting them know what worked and what didn't so they can come up with a plan that, that meets the needs of your student and your family. Rob Bonner, are you on the Zoom today? We have a parent that's asking, um, will students need a physical to participate in season one? Yes, you need a physical. Um, I know they're saying it's hard to get into a doctor at this point, but I do believe there's some accommodations occurring and some plans to address that need for a physical in uh, uh, for the season one. Rob said he was going to reach out to the healthcare community to see if they could do some kind of outreach for okay. athletes. And I haven't heard if that's coming to fruition. All right, so, we're, so they're we're looking for some that. kind of a clinic, yeah. Um, a big question or- Colin, yes, the physical is part of season one. Thank yeah. you, Rob. Uh, so a parent asking, so should the SPED coordinator already have, already have contacted their caseload students? So I believe, and I talked with Mona Boyd, our um, special ed director today, and they, uh, the case managers are back and they have begun contacting families. It just came back this week though. Yeah. So every, every it, IEP was being reviewed. Every IEP being reviewed, Stacy's telling me. And as they go through that, they'll be calling you. Yeah. Um, you know, they have a, a contract that extends beyond the regular school year. So they're back and they're working and they're planning to, to uh, reach out to you. Um, I'm just chat, uh, checking here. Um, Steve, Rob Bonner said he would call you. I'm not sure if he knows who, it says Steve's iPhone, so. I'm guessing it's Steve Miller. If I okay. were to make it, if I were yeah. to bet. All right. Don't know if it's Steve Miller, <laughs> but um, we will, if you'll um, reach out to Rob via email, he'll make sure he calls you. And he seems like he knows who it is. All, All right. right. I don't see any, those were some good questions today. Yeah. It's Thanks, good. Man. We're getting, man, each week we come and we get a little bit closer and it's getting clearer. Yeah, it's getting clearer. Yeah. It, uh, it was crazy because so many details are being, it's crazy this week <laughs> to be so many details being developed. We're getting there. Um, but it's coming along. So that's good. Yeah. Just double checking the other pages to make sure we haven't missed a question. All right, friends and community members, uh, thank you for tuning in today. And we will be back with you next week, another fireside chat. I'm really looking forward to next week to see if we can get another green week. Uh, makes me happy we're getting, when, those, we're getting pretty close. when those numbers are going down. So thank you and stay safe and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.